Hi everybody. Thanks for joining me. Do you know what I hate the most about COVID lockdown? It's not knowing. You know what I mean? I'm doing everything I can to stay safe. If I need to go out, I take all the necessary precautions. I'm wearing what I deem necessary, but still might not be enough. Even though the percentage of people who have COVID is low, there's always a chance that this bus journey or this trip to the shop will be the one where someone else is positive and I get infected through no fault of my own. And I know what you're going to say. Could I just have not gone to the shop or not taken the bus? You're probably going to ask, were you dressed appropriately? By which I assume you mean, was I wearing a mask? And I assume you can tell where I'm going with this. (sighs) Every, every couple of months, this whole scenario plays out like it was pre-written. A high-profile news story comes out which outlines the horrific abuse, rape, murder, or all three of an innocent woman. People read the story and are horrified. Some women then go online and say, holy shit, this is horrible, I'm scared about something like this happening to me. These women then support each other through dialogue to the point where they can start opening up about their own experiences. Things like this happen all the time, it's just not spoken about, they'll say correctly, by the way. For example, X thing has happened to me. Well, that's awful, another one will say. Y thing has happened to me, so I get what you're going through. Another will probably come along and say, well, only Z thing has happened to me, so I can't understand what you're going through, but it had an impact on me, so I can empathise. At which point, the other women will say, what do you mean only Z has happened to you? That's a serious thing, I hope you're okay. The main connection between their trauma is clear. These things were done by men. So naturally and logically, some women say they have a hard time trusting men. And most people agree that men should be educated on what signs to look out for in their friends and to call out shitty behaviour. Now it's around this point where things start to take a turn. Once the term men is used, it awakens the troglodyte maggots who've been festering in the dry dog shit of their own opinions since the last time this conversation happened. And like clockwork, like fucking clockwork, they will tweet, hashtag not all men. Now I don't know about you, but this always reminds me of like that um like that trope from the old kid shows, like the parents are out and the kids are playing and they break a lamp or some shit, and the parents come home and the first thing the kid says is like, hi, we had fun and we didn't break the lamp. The first thing you tweet being hashtag not all men is an admission of acceptance or guilt. Now calm down, calm down. I'm not saying that just because you tweeted hashtag not all men that you were a rapist. I'm not saying that. Because I can't know that. But I can say for certain that you're a rape apologist. And I can hear you there getting ready to type. You're going to say, well, Paul the Robin, if that is your real name, it's not... Uh, Are you saying that just because some men rape, that all men are guilty? No. I'm not saying that. And no one has said that. You seem to assume everyone has. But nobody has. What I am saying is that your immediate jump into a defensive position when someone says the fact that men rape is suspect, to say the least. And like this, this is something that's said every single time. And it's fact, men commit a vast majority of assaults and rapes. Men also tend to have male friends. So, men should call their friends out if they're doing something shitty. I mean, the main point is actually about supporting women who are telling their stories, but I see that as less of a male issue and more of just being an empathetic, decent human being kind of thing. Whenever someone is arrested for sexual assault or rape, you always hear the same thing. The signs were there. And as good as someone might be in cloaking their speech, their actions always speak volumes. Men who exhibit shitty, rapey behaviour are probably going to do something shitty and rapey. That's not rocket science. And a wall of silence is harmful and essentially an acceptance of these actions. By staying silent, you're essentially no different to people you've probably criticised in the past. Bishops who ignored abuse, politicians who ignored corruption, etc, etc. You're not as guilty as the person who raped, but you are guilty. And I, I, I hear you typing, just, just stop. 
And, and please, please just listen. Just listen. This is not a weird feminist agenda trying to destroy men. And this is not women trying to indoctrinate you into being a feminist. This is simply, and I really can't believe I need to say this, this is simply about not seeing women as a fuckable piece of meat. And if you find that a difficult concept to understand, then you are the enemy. And when you tweet hashtag not all men, you're not tweeting about yourself. For those of you who are already deep in the anti-feminist camp, I don't know if I can convince you to be a better person. I, I hope I can. For those guys watching who really aren't sure about who to believe, just talk to the women in your life and listen to them. Sometimes they won't have been affected personally, but they'll know someone who has been. They'll have stories. And sometimes they'll have truly horrific stories. Just listen to them. And if you truly want to support men during the next time this inevitably happens, please, I, I beg of you, just sit back and let the victim speak. Because too many women are telling their stories and not being listened to. Thanks for watching, everyone.